Good evening, and welcome to What's Your Story? What images come to mind when you hear the word witch? Are they good images or bad images? What do you really know about witchcraft and witches? Do you have an open mind? Are you willing to learn? My guest tonight is Phoenix Moon. She identifies herself as a witch. She openly practices witchcraft. She drove here, no, she didn't fly in on a broom, to share her story with us. Sit back, listen, and learn. Welcome to the show, Phoenix. Thank you. Phoenix, let's get right to it, okay? Yeah. Um, if you would be so kind as to tell our viewing audience a bit about your background, why don't we start with like where you were born? I was born here in Connecticut, um, actually in Watertown, Connecticut. Okay. Um, been, you know, very uh, kind of loving family, um, very close knit group. Do you have siblings? Uh, yes, I have two brothers, two sisters. Okay. Um, actually, the baby of the family. Oh, you're the baby. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, your brothers and sisters, where are they, and what are they doing? Uh, actually, everyone's still in Connecticut. We kind of spread out a little bit. Um, I have my oldest sister. She raises German shepherds in Watertown. Okay. Um, my oldest brother lives in Bristol, um, and he's kind of, um, you know, he's a disabled. He kind of injured himself a little bit. Okay. And then my other brother works for an um, electric company. And then my other sister, she also, uh, she's a stay-at-home mom. Okay. So. so where'd you go to high school, and what was the mascot? I went to Caner Tech. Uh, which was in Waterbury. Uh, it's a technical school. Uh, mascot's a pa Black Panther. Uh, so okay. um, that was interesting. <laughs> All right. Okay. And what degrees do you hold? Uh, well, in, in, uh, from Caner Tech, I have my fashion design degree. Um, and then I went on and got my auto body license. Then I went to Tungsis, which um, got my associates in accounting, then went further into central Connecticut for my bachelor's in accounting with a minor in criminal justice. Wow, so you have an auto body uh, certificate or degree, do yeah. you? At w what, repairing the bodies of cars? Yeah, I used to actually do the body work on cars. How long did you do that? Um, I actually only did it briefly for about a year and a half before I injured my arms. Oh, okay. um, the repetitive work caused yeah. carpal tunnel and tennis elbow. Oh, yes. And was told basically I can only do it as a hobby now, oh. not as a living. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what religion did you practice growing up? Um, actually, I was Roman Catholic growing up, um, very heavily into it, did a lot of volunteer work with it, and did it all the way up through. Um, high school into my uh, sophomore year um, and it was kind of at that time everyone in town was always you know at, it was like all Roman Catholic or um, some type of a Catholic type of a background because that's what everybody did. Mm -hmm. So as, as a child you were mm -hmm. christened into this uh, as a, what was your, your Christian name? Uh, Heidi. Heidi. Yes. Okay. And uh, Phoenix Moon, I know the audience wants mm -hmm. to know, where did that come from? Um, actually, it's something that, with all the issues I have gone through, um, every time, instead of letting it knock me down, I've gotten back up and rose out stronger. Um, which is what a phoenix does. Oh, it okay. takes in, it keeps getting stronger. Every time it gets knocked down, it dies, it's reborn, and becomes stronger every time. Um, the moon portion is one, it's a connection to the goddess, and two, um, I was actually born at midnight. Um, so the moon, obviously, there, so um, it just kind of went together. <laughs> Now, you've been uh, married for 24 years, right? Correct. And you have children? Uh, yes, I have four kids. Tell us about, the, about them. Okay. Um, <laughs> my oldest is 26. Um, she is actually, um, her, she's engaged. She actually is, practices Buddhism. Okay. Um, and her fiancé is actually, um, he's 
half of Puerto Rican, half Guyanese, and he practices Hinduism. Okay. Um, and then my second daughter, she's kind of, um, well, she has two children, so I'm actually a grandmother already. Um, she has two children, and um, her uh, fiancé, he's pagan. She's kind of on the border of not really picking a religion. Um, my third daughter, she is, um, she has a child, uh, she's got my grandson, and she is also practices Buddhism, okay. and her um, uh, boyfriend or baby's father is actually a Satanist. Okay. And then my son is the youngest, he's 18, and he actually um, kind of goes more towards Christian, so he's the only one that kind of goes Christian. Um, but then I have my husband who um, kind of goes into the Norse tradition and practices um, more towards Viking and Norse. Okay. Now, what is a Satanist? What is um, a Satanist is actually someone who actually believes they themselves are in control of their own destiny. Um, so they don't believe in a god. Um, they believe themselves are a god, and um, you know, so they take and believe that they control their own future. So they don't believe in no devil. They don't believe in um, anything of that nature. They just believe that there is no God, that they themselves is one. Oh, I see. So it's sort of a, I am responsible for my destiny. There are yeah. no higher powers. Correct. So the term Satan, as we understand it, to mean a, a force of evil would not apply in this particular situation. Correct. I see. Okay. Well, I learned something today. Mm -hmm. You describe yourself as a practicing witch. Would you please tell the audience exactly what does that mean and what is witchcraft? Take your time. That's why they're watching. They want to know right. what this is. Witchcraft is actually, um, well, it's two parts. You could be a witch and you're also considered pagan where you worship the earth, but you do spell work. However, there is a difference where you could just be pagan where you worship the earth. Um, so it's two parts. One is doing spellcraft. Another part is um, the religious portion. The religious portion is where you honor the goddess and a god, or some just pick one or the other and they honor them. Um, and so that's part of it. And then the other part is doing spell work. Um, I am considered a healing witch, so I do a lot of healing. Um, so there's all kinds of alternative healing that I do for spell work. Um, I have helped a lot of people, um, and sometimes it's a matter of them coming in and they'll ask me and I'll help them with what spells to do or what they need to do for spells or something just to carry with them. Um, other times they'll come in and they'll ask me to put a spell together for them and then they'll take and um, bring the spells home and do the spells themselves. Part of doing the witchcraft is the person doing the spell has the most power into that spell. Um, I can do a spell for someone, but it won't be as powerful as them doing it themselves because your emotions, your thoughts, all your intent is what goes into that spell, and that's what make it, makes it the strongest. So um, someone that wants a love spell, it's their emotions goes into that spell, so that's what's going to make it stronger. So it's not going to be where if I do the spell for them, it's not going to be as strong as them doing it themselves. Okay. <clears throat> Say uh, for conversation's sake, and excuse me, I don't know where this frog is coming from. Mm -hmm. You um, Christians have the ritual of going to church. And what, what is a... Uh, what is the what are the tenets of the of of of, of a witch? Um, you know, do you have uh, you know your deities or? Please explain how that works. Okay, um, in witchcraft, uh, there's different versions of it. So, in the one that I follow, um, I have both a goddess and a god. We believe in the goddess as being the stronger of the two because we believe the the goddess is the one that creates. She's the one that gives birth to everything. Okay. Um, so we believe she's the one that it started with her, 
and then she took in, broke off a part of herself, and that's how we got the God. Because in everything, you have um, both the yin and yang. You have both male, female. You have both light, dark. So in the goddess is everything. And so everything comes from her. Um, so we believe she's the strongest. And so we worship her as the ultimate, and then the God as the next down. Um, and so everyone kind of chooses their own version of her. Even though everything is her, it's like a diamond, um, is the way everyone kind of explains it in witchcraft. Okay. Um, it's there, but it has many fa uh, facets to it. So there's many parts to that one thing. So the goddess is one, but everybody has a different name for her or a different version of her that they worship. Um, so I worship her as Bridget. But if something happens and sometimes I need, um, instead of a healing goddess, I need someone for love, I might go to, you know, Athena or Diana or someone else, but, or for protection, I might go to the Morrigan. Um, you know, so even though there's one, there's different versions of her and we go and depending on what version we need is what we go to. Now, how do you worship? Uh, the goddess. Well, what do you do? Um, basically, for to worship her, we honor her by loving everything that she has created. Um, we love animals. We love nature. We take care of everything. You know. Um, you know. We don't, you know, pollute and things of that nature. Instead, if we go out and we see stuff on the ground, we pick it up. We clean up that, you know, making sure things are honored. Um, we take and um, we'll honor the goddess by doing rituals where we'll just maybe light a candle in her honor, light incense um, to honor her. Um, we'll go out in nature and if we see some flower or something that that particular goddess likes, we'll ask if we're, you know, we'll ask the flower, will you allow us to pick you to take and pay honor to the goddess? And then we will pick the flower and we will put it on our altars. Um, we have our own altars. Usually um, a lot of people will have them indoors. Some have them outdoors. Um, they're all different types of altars. Some people will have many altars in their homes. Uh, I have one because I honor Bridget and Apollo. Apollo happens to be the god I follow. Mm -hmm. But I also do dragon magic, which means I honor dragons and the power that dragons had bestowed on the earth years ago. Uh, so I have a second altar for the dragons. Okay. Then I also actually have another altar for at my store so that if something comes up and I need to honor, I have an altar at my store. Especially I hold rituals there for free for anyone to come in. And they could take, and dark moon, um, I sometimes do, but every full moon I do a ritual, and every Sabbath or holiday, that's our holidays, we call Sabbaths. Um, I hold rituals for people to come in, and this way here, if they want to do one or to see one, they're allowed to come in and either watch or participate. Um, so we have different ways we, we hold those uh, that we'll honor the goddess with. I see. Now, you came out, so to speak, if you will, six years ago. Approximately, yeah. Right. Pre previous to that, you had been practicing without being out of the closet, as you put it, when mm -hmm. I initially interviewed you. Why did you hide your religious beliefs? Um, it was kind of... At that, going back, it still was kind of taboo for anybody. Um, anytime you talked with anybody, especially Christians, they're like, oh, that's devil worshiping. You shouldn't be doing that. And they had very strong negative opinions of it. Um, then about six years ago, I finally got to the point of why should I hide who I am? Why should I hide what God or goddess I worship just because it's not the normal? And so I started getting vocal about it, and I would tell you and explain to people what it's about so that they wouldn't be so scared of it, because most people are just scared of it because they don't know what it is. 
And so I started telling everybody what it was. What kind of uh, discrimination did you face? Um, I would go someplace and if they see the pentacles or, or different things I would be wearing, I've had people would grab their kids and pull them away from me. I would have them tell me that I should be ashamed of myself, that I was a devil worshiper, um, that I needed to repent, I needed to take in, ask God for forgiveness. Um, there was, you know, all kinds of things of that nature. Uh, I've actually even had someone try to, you know, throw holy water on me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's all different, but it's because they're afraid of the unknown. They don't even realize that um, basically Christians are almost the only ones that actually believe in a devil. They're in every other religion almost, there is no such thing for us as a devil. That's an interesting point, mm -hmm. yeah. And when you decided, okay, enough, mm -hmm. I am who I am and I'm going to show the world, how's that been working out for you? Uh, I still have some people that have issues with it, but that my true friends, uh, they're perfectly fine with it. A lot of them have sh actually told me that they also were witches or pagan and worshipped, um, you know, the goddesses or they just worship nature. Um, some are atheists and they just, you know, they don't worship gods at all. And, you know, so it's a lot of the ones that were actually true friends have actually backed me 100 percent. At what point did you recognize you wanted to practice witchcraft? It's something that has always interested me ever since a kid. Um, basically, Greek mythology was the strong point. That okay. was something that has always stuck with me. Um, Apollo has always called to me ever since I was a kid. Okay. Uh, actually, Bridget didn't come to me until more within the last decade. Um, she became the, the one that I ended up picking as my deity, to my patron goddess. Um, but it was always Apollo that it was kind of like, you know, really called to me. And it was always that understanding of there had to be something more than what people were telling me, because it seemed in the Christian beliefs, it changed all the time. Yeah. It seemed like the more that if somebody wanted something, all of a sudden different things would change. Um, you had the Bible. Well, then all of a sudden you had the New Testament. And then this came out and that came out. And then, you know, um, annulments, you all of a sudden, if you wanted to have one, you could buy one. Uh, my aunt was never allowed inside to make uh, her communion because she married somebody that was divorced. But years later, all of a sudden, well, if you pay us this amount, we'll give him an annulment and then you can make communion. But yet she went to church every single Sunday. She was there every, you know, Christian holiday. And yet she wasn't able to make communion because of the simple fact she married somebody else. So it wasn't even her that did something wrong. Somebody else took and did it and they punished her for it. That to me wasn't what the gods had actually wanted. They wanted you to worship them and to take care of each other. Not this whole thing of, you know, how much money you can donate. And you know, that's what it seems like it has become. Um, I'm more about, you know, helping the neighbors, you know, helping those that need help. And it shouldn't all be about, you know, what you can do for the church. It should be what you should be able to do for each other. Um, there's, there's nothing to do with money in the church, and there never should be. Now, the um, witch, the name of witch or the prevailing view of witches is evil, if, if I'm not mistaken, that had its origins, what, centuries ago, did it not? Uh, yes. What happened was originally witches were sought out for healing and there was um, nothing wrong with that. It started actually first in the Ice Ages, yes. witchcraft actually started way back then. The paintings on the cave walls for a good hunt, that was witchcraft. That was them putting out what they wanted and then going out for the hunt to take and try to get, you know, um, a good hunt. And okay. that's, that's where witchcraft started. 
and then it took and just kept evolving. And then what happened was um, it was decided Christianity should be the main religion. And then because they wanted that to be the main religion, paganism became outlawed. And they started raiding the pagan churches or temples, I should say. And they looted them. And then they tried to convert everybody to Christianity. And then the ones that they were having a hard time converting, they would take the pagan goddesses or gods and turn them into Christian saints just to get them to go with them, or they would take the pagan traditions and make them into Christian traditions just to get people to convert. Um, one of the ones, like the goddess Bridget that I follow, she's a Celtic uh, goddess. And in Ireland, they couldn't get them to agree, so they made her into a saint. And that's how you ended up with St. Bridget. And they actually she had a temple for her where they had a flame lit as a pagan temple, and it was never to put out. And the Christians actually went in and they put it out. Then after they couldn't get anyone to convert because they kept still following Bridget's ways, they actually uh, said that she was a saint. And they came up with this whole story of how she existed and how she did all these um, things to be, make her into a saint. And then they relit the light in the temple or the, the, uh, the torch in the temple and they've kept it burning ever since again, but as to on her as a saint versus a goddess, just to get the Celtic people to convert to Christianity. My goodness gracious. Now you are, comfortable in your own skin, I imagine. Yeah. And uh, you have said before in my initial interview with you that being out, practicing the way you want, you feel free. Yeah. You feel liberated. I do. You feel that you are now being able to enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness on your own terms in your own way. Now, your children and your, your, your family, right? How has your practice of your choice of religion impacted them? Um, they actually, they support me. They have no issues with it at all. Uh, I have, you know, the kids actually will stop in the store and help me out there. Um, they don't know much about it because it's not their choice of religion. Sure. Um, but they support me in it. Uh, I've had where when I was initiated, I actually had, um, except for the ones I had to work, the other ones came to my initiation ceremony. Oh, great. And so they attended it to support me. Okay. Um, some of my rituals they've attended, they, you know, they support it a hundred percent. They, they're like, well, that's what you want. Then that's your, your choice type Terrific. of deal. Terrific. Just like I gave them their choice of following whatever, whatever religion they, they yeah. wanted. Yeah, sure. um, I encouraged it when they were kids, they okay. were told to find what they wanted. Sure. Uh, sure. They went to, um, you know, they went to Christian churches. And they went to found their, found um, their own way. Yep, Good. they they actually attended um, the what is it the Jewish the synagogues okay. and everything. They've been to all types of religious ceremonies, okay. and so that's why they ended up where they're at. Is they got to pick and choose what they were comfortable with. Okay, well, thank you for being here, Phoenix. We really appreciate it. That's all the time we have for tonight's show. My thanks to my guest, Phoenix Moon. Everybody has a story. What's yours? Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, good night.